Okay, in this video I'd like to show you uh, a bit about continuous and finite wave functions. And this is an important concept, especially when you're looking at wave functions going through different areas. So, say for example I had a potential of negative V0 here, and I had my wave function would exist, of course, in three different areas, namely in region 1, region 2, and region 3. And you need to discuss, or need to at least analyse, what happens to the wave function in each of the boundaries, the boundary between 1 and 2, and the boundary between 2 and 3. So very quickly I'm going to show you the following. First of all, the wave function and the second derivative of the wave function are continuous. Alright, what does continuous mean? Well, it means that the, the, if you were to draw it, you could draw it with without taking your finger or your, your, the buyer off the page. This is a continuous, that would be a continuous line, of course, so it's the same thing with a wave function. For example, if you had a function that did this, this would be a discontinuous function because look at the position x, it has two values for y, which cannot happen, of course, if it's continuous because it can only have one particular value. It can only be single valued. So how do we know that the wave function and the second derivative of the wave function are continuous? We know that because psi double prime, or the Hamiltonian times psi double prime, is equal to constant times psi. Okay? What that means is because we're talking about a constant, if you think about derivatives, we'll say d dx of um, d dx of x squared is equal to 2x, and d dx d dx of 2x is equal to 2. Alright? So think about this. If the function x x squared was not continuous, well then we wouldn't be able to get a finite value for, dd, for, for, for ddx of 2x. In other words, the, the, uh, we'll say the, the derivative prior to the one that you're talking about must be continuous in order for your current one to be finite. Alright? So this is the same thing here. We're talking about, we're saying that our second derivative must be constant or it must be finite. Therefore, it means that uh, well, the second derivative must be must be uh, finite. Therefore, the first deriv derivative mu or must be continuous. Or I'll say it again: the second derivative must be equal to constant times psi. That means that the first derivative must be equal to uh, must be continuous. All right. So, like I said, the first derivative is continuous because if it was not continuous, then you would not be able to get a value for psi double prime. All right. Next, if we look at the momentum operator acting on psi. We know uh, from a small bit of theory that you must have a constant value of momentum. You cannot have an infinite value of momentum. So p hat operating on psi, that is the momentum operator, momentum operator operating on psi is equal to a constant. Well, that means the psi prime is equal to, is, is finite. And you might say, well, why is that? Well, look, the, the, men, the momentum operator is minus i times h bar d dx. So it is another differential. So in order for the first derivative to be continuous, uh, the the sorry, excuse me. In order for the the first derivative to be finite, because we need a finite momentum, the actual the the actual function itself must be continuous. So psi must be continuous in order for its first derivative to be finite. All right. Next, let's look at the Hamiltonian. If we apply the Hamiltonian on psi, it's the same as e times psi, at least for the, the time-independent Schrodinger equation. Of course, we know the, time, the Hamiltonian has a second derivative, d2 dx squared, like that. So that means that, and because it's equal to the energy, we cannot have an infinite energy. So that means that the second derivative must be equal to a finite value. What does that mean? It means the first derivative must be a continuous okay because uh, for the, for the same reason i showed you before and similarly similarly the uh, the well, the wave function itself must be continuous all right and finally finally if we look at the the uh, the, the probability of the wave function existing so we know that the probability of the wave function existing is equal to 1 and that's calculated by getting the complex conjugate times the wave function as well, and we know that equals to 1. So that means that the wave function must exist somewhere, so the, as a result, the wave function must be finite. 
There was no way you could normalize this and get it equal to 1 if the wave function or its complex conjugate was infinite. All right, so just to, uh, just to, to recap, the first derivative must be continuous because of the, uh, because of the Hamiltonian act uh, acting on, on, the, uh, on the wave function. The first derivative must be finite because of the momentum, momentum operator acting on the wave function. The second derivative must be finite, and also the wave function itself must be finite. And each time, and just to say this again, if you have d dx of x squared, and we know that's equal to 2x, and if you want to get d dx uh, of 2x, we know that's equal to 2. So this number here is finite. And the only way this number here can be finite is if the previous derivative was continuous. So if, and just to finally say this, and I'll say this only once more, if at any stage you have uh, a derivative, we'll say the third derivative, that means, and this is, and say it is finite, if for some reason it's finite, that means that the second derivative must be continuous. Alright, so thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.